In fact, what does valve clearances mean? Well, let's take a look at the front of each rocker arm. When the piston is at its uppermost point or top dead centre on the compression stroke, here where the rocker arm meets the top of the valve on each, there should be a certain clearance or gap between the two. That's because if there is a clearance on each of these, when the piston is at top dead center on the compression stroke, then it means that neither of them are putting a slight push on any of the valves, which we don't want. Because if we had any of these valves open on the compression stroke, when we're supposed to be compressing the air and fuel for combustion, then of course combustion just wouldn't take place because we'd be losing that vital pressure. So making sure we have a gap will make sure that these valves are closed in this position. But we can't just settle for any old gap. The gaps on these are way too much. So let's have a look at how incorrect gaps can affect the running of the engine. Excessive valve clearance gaps like this can cause what's known as valve clatter. That loud ticking and tapping noise as the engine runs because the tappets are clattering the top like this because of the distance. And you could imagine this kind of operation would create excessive wear for the tappets and the top of the valve stems possibly, and potentially components such as the push rods because we've got too much gap and slap there, allowing these components to move up and down excessively. This can all have a knock on effect right down the system to the two cams and the cam followers. Now, I've overemphasized the gap on this to make a point. The likelihood is you'd never see a gap of this sort of distance. But you can imagine that when the engine turns and the piston lowers for the induction stroke, it's going to take slightly longer for the valve to open because the tappet has to close that distance first before it can apply pressure to open the valve. Worse still, is that it won't push the valve down far enough. It will start to come back up too soon because the end of the tappet is generally too far up so it won't go low enough because of that oversized gap. So you can see that before the piston has even finished its induction stroke, the inlet valve closed again and when it did open, there was only a very small gap there which will put a major restriction on all of that air and fuel that needs to come into the cylinder. Okay, so now let's have a look at what happens when there's too much distance on the exhaust valve tappet. So let's imagine combustion has just taken place and this is the power stroke, the piston has been forced down and inside here is exhaust gases, the piston keeps traveling down. And when the piston gets to about this point, the exhaust valve should start to open before the piston travels to its lowest point. And you can see that with the exhaust cam at the back. The highest point of the cam is starting to push the cam follower before the piston has lowered. That should of course start to compress the valve spring and start to open the exhaust valve. But as with the inlet tappet, when there's too much gap here on the exhaust tappet, it has to close that gap first before it can even push down on the valve spring to open the valve. And because usually as the piston gets to the bottom of the power stroke like that, the exhaust valve starts to open then to allow air to come in through the exhaust valve into the cylinder, thus creating a swirl of air and exhaust gas mix inside of here, ready to be pushed out of the exhaust valve. And at the same time, the opening of the exhaust valve as the piston is still lowering ensures that there's no buildup of suction pressure inside here, preventing the piston from going down efficiently. But if there's too much gap on the tappet, then the piston can be traveling down and the exhaust valve can open too late. And a suction pressure can possibly build up inside of here preventing the best possible movement efficiency possible for the piston in its downward travel. And also when it does open, it's likely that it won't open at its maximum, therefore making it more difficult for the piston to push the gases out through the exhaust. This again can possibly cause a drag for the piston.
Of course, mentioning all of this about the valves and tappets may indeed only cause a slight issue for the engine, but we want the engine to run as efficiently as possible, so we don't want any problems if we can help it. So making sure the valve clearances are set correctly is a must. Okay, so now we've seen what happens when there's too much gap there, let's now have a look what happens when there's too little gap. Well, in extreme cases where the tappet is pushing down on the valve spring, because it's adjusted way too low, means that the valves may well not be seating correctly onto their seats. There may be a slight gap there. And this, of course, can reduce engine compression and reduce the efficiency of the engine. At the same time, if there's constant leakage through an incorrectly seated valve over time, this can cause damage to the seat, a condition known as valve seat recession. So if we do have a situation of valve seat recession here, then as I've said, that can cause reduced compression, decreased engine performance and potential valve damage over time. And because the valves may not be closing fully, this can allow hot gases to pass through them much more often and more readily. This increases the temperatures of the valve seats and accumulation of hot gases in the chamber just behind the valves, potentially causing overheating, valve burning and premature wear. So valve seat leakage can cause poor fuel combustion, increased emissions and potential misfiring. And the maintenance of any engine should include regular checks of the valve clearances to make sure they are at the right distances. This, of course, is if you want to maintain the best engine performance and dependability. OK, so I hope I've given you enough information there as to why we set the tappets and the understanding around it. And if you think this video is worthy of a thumbs up, then please do give me one. It helps me get my content out there further to a larger audience and it really helps me out. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.